and welcome to the second lecture of uh, module 4. In the previous lecture, we introduced uh, nonlinear algebraic equations, uh, where do they arise in uh, chemical engineering problems and uh, we started off with uh, bracketing methods. Uh, we looked at two bracketing methods, uh, the first one was bisection method and the second one was uh, the regular falsi method. Uh, in the bracketing methods, what we used was we used uh, essentially two initial guesses uh, x l and x r. We chose the two initial guesses such that they, uh, they lie on the either side of the true solution x star. Uh, we verified that by finding out the product f of x l multiplied by f of x r is less than 0. If that is satisfied, those are admissible uh, initial guesses. And then uh, we uh, used um, ways to actually get the new solution uh, x of i plus 1. Uh, in bisection method, what we did was we started off with a particular length of the chord, we half the chord at, at uh, each time instead. In the regular falsi method, what we did was we got the two points which lied on the curve, we connected those two points with a straight line, found out the point where that particular straight line intersects uh, the x axis, that became our new guess. What we did in regular falsi method is essentially uh, when we get the new guess, we again ensured that that particular new guess bracketed the true solution and then we proceeded. Uh, the methods that we are going to cover in this lecture are the methods which are known as open methods and they are called open methods because they do not, the, the solutions do not have to bracket the true solution uh, that, that we have. Okay. So, what I will do is I will do a very quick brief recap of what we covered in the regular falsi method and that is going to uh, motivate our next method. Uh, which is called the secant method. The next method uh, uh, is called the secant method and we will use the regular falsi method in order to motivate uh, our secant method. Okay. So, let us just recap what we did with, uh, with respect to uh, regular falsi. Let us say we have a curve of this type and we started off with x r and x l. What we did was we connected this x r and this x l with a line and we found out the intersection of that particular line with the x axis and then we call that as x i plus 1. Okay. Uh, the expression for x i plus 1 that we developed in the previous module was x i plus 1 was equal to uh, x l minus f l multiplied by x r minus x l divided by f r minus f l. I mean of course, you can interchange uh, uh, these as well as long as you interchange both the numerator and denominator uh, it really does not matter. Uh, uh, the reason is negative this will be negative of this and the denominator will also be negative of this and the negative negative will cancel. So, this is what we did uh, in order to get the new guess x i plus 1. In regular falsi then the next step that we implemented was we checked f of x i plus 1 multiplied by f of x l whether or not it is less than 0. If yes, we replaced x l with x r, if no, we replaced x uh, uh, if uh, with x uh, if yes, we replaced x r with x i plus 1, if no, we replaced x l with x i plus 1. So, in this particular case, we replaced x l with x i plus 1. So, that was our regular falsi method and we keep repeating, we kept repeating that un, until x i plus 1 was close enough to x of l. Okay. That is what we did in the regular falsi method. Uh, the secant method works very similar to the regular falsi method, but the only difference is we do not care whether the solutions, uh, whether the solutions bracket the true solution or not. Okay. So, x i plus 1 is going to be generated in a very similar way, but we drop 
uh, uh, the notations x l and x r, we drop the pretense whether uh, uh, x l and x r lie on the either side of the solution. We just start with solution 0 with solution 1 and we keep generating the new solutions and we discard the uh, oldest solution and retain only the latest solution. What I mean by that is we will replace this particular equation with another equation in secant method. And the generation of the new point is going to be x i plus 1 will be equal to x i minus f i multiplied by x i minus x i minus 1 divided by f i minus f i minus 1. Okay. If you compare it with what we have just written a few minutes ago, if you compare this particular expression with uh, the expression for the secant method, the two expressions are one and the same. The only difference is we do not bother whether that x i and x i minus 1 lie on either side of the curve. They can both lie on one side of the curve, they can both they can lie on either sides of the curve and it really does not matter, matter because uh, the secant method does not depend on bracketing the, uh, uh, the solution. Okay. So, let us again draw that same curve that we had drawn previously. We will call this as x1, we will call this as x0 okay. and we will connect them with a straight line. This becomes our x2. Okay. So, now we have x0, x1 and x2. What we did in regular falsi method, we, we multiplied f of x0 with f, f of x2 and decided whether x, x2 is replacing x0 or x2 is going to replace x1. We are not going to do that in secant method. We are going to discard the oldest solution and retain the two new solutions. So, we have x1 and x2 as the two new solutions and we will look at this particular point, we will join these two with, with the same curve okay. and this is now our x3. Okay. Now, up to this point, the regular falsi method and the secant method were used in the same manner. What we, we ended up doing was, we discarded x0 and retained x2 and our x1 and x2 still bracketed uh, the true solution that we got. This is not what we are going to do in secant method. What we realize over here in secant uh, in this method is x2 and x3 are lying on the same side of the solution x star. In regular falsi, we would have re, uh, retained x1 and x3. In secant, we do not retain x1. x1 is the oldest solution we currently have in the memory. We will discard x1 and stay with x2 and x3. Okay. So, now we will have the two points not bracketing the solution. Okay. However, that does not matter, we will still go ahead and draw that particular chord, extend it and see where that particular chord intersects uh, the x axis. This becomes our x 4. Now, when we have our x 4, we will discard our x 2, we will stick with x 3 and x 4, again draw the chord and we will keep repeating that until we uh, converge to uh, the desired solution. So, looking at the algorithm for secant method, the first step that we do is uh, initial guesses are to be chosen. Uh, in uh, our uh, regular falsi method, what we had to ensure was f of x0 multiplied by f of x1 was less than 0 for regular falsi. No need to check this.
okay so that's one that's the difference between uh, secant and regular fall we don't need to check whether x0 and x1 uh, lie on either sides of uh, of uh, the the true solution x star okay so that's uh, the initial guess i'll just erase this because since we don't need this particular criterion i'll just erase this criterion rather than keeping it uh, on the blue board and cluttering the board uh, the next is to de to determine the uh, how we are going to move forward that means to use xi minus 1 and xi plus 1 in our x i minus 1 and x i to get x i plus 1. Now, for I, although I am repeating myself over here, I will just write it down for the sake of completeness. Okay. This is going to be uh, our uh, x i plus 1. So, initial guess is x0 and x, uh, x1, xi plus 1 is uh, going to be determined through this particular expression. We verify whether the difference xi plus 1 minus xi is less than some tolerance epsilon. If it is, then uh, the so, uh, our numerical solution is equal to fx, uh, x, x of i plus 1. If it is not, we increment i and we repeat this process. Uh, repetitively till uh, this particular condition is met okay so this is going to be the algorithm for for the secant method